Certification, everybody's favorite topic. Um, we've got a TPM with an endorsement key that we have not yet certified, and we've got a public endorsement key with some kind of offline verification mechanism that a human says, yes, this is the key that I created. Um, or, for that matter, we've got a TPM with an uncertified endorsement key that somebody sent over the network because really, as Nino said, what's the big problem? Um, in either case, we want to create an endorsement credential that is a certificate that says this endorsement key is, belongs to a legitimate TPM. And not only this is a key, but that this is the endorsement key. We would generally want it to be signed by an enterprise certificate authority in the context we're talking about. Um, there is online, you know, there are some folks online who run CAs that will sign anything. That doesn't really help much. We're really caring about for all of the people who are likely to want to trust your TPM, pick a CA or multiple CAs that they will trust. And when we certify it, we also want to include relevant information about the TPM. It's one thing to say, this is a TPM endorsement key, but in general, we really recommend they include things like the TPM manufacturer or the version number. So if somebody comes along and says, whoops, we've discovered an exploit in Broadcom's TPMs, you know which endorsement keys actually belong to Broadcom TPMs. Um, in some enterprise contexts, you will also often want to include things like the machine identifier. Now, this is something you're not going to find in endorsement credentials from the TPM manufacturers because they created a chip. It's something you might or might not find in the endorsement credential of the, or, or a platform credential from, say, Dell, because what is the machine identifier, you know? But if you're an enterprise, you will often want to say, this TPM is associated with or whatever your property number is. So, because in enterprise contexts, we're not worried about privacy, we're worried about tracking. So we can go ahead and put useful information like that in the certificate. So unfortunately, this is a little easier said than done. Because the commercial CAs today, I have been informed by people who know more about this than I do, really expect to be handed an X509 certificate signing request, which is a self-signed request. And the endorsement key can't sign anything certificate request or not. Um, and in fact, most TPM keys are completely incapable of signing X509 certificate signing requests. That means that you need a CA that is capable of accepting a certificate signing request based on some variation of the humans say the process is good um, rather than this certificate signing request. Now, I have to admit that I was kind of boggled by the fact that every commercial CA today requires a self-signed certificate signing request or it complains bitterly because there's not really any security added by self-signing a certificate um, or a certificate request. It says, yes, I have the private key, but if you don't have the private key, why are you putting in a certificate signing request anyway? Um, so I am not particularly concerned by trying to bypass this, but it does mean that the CAs often need some kind of extension to perform this operation. Um, I have been informed that there may or may not be some processes that are part of some X509 extensions in some cases. I'm not a certifi certification expert and I'm not going to pretend to be. What I do know is I have been informed that this usually does involve either finding some specialized CAs using something very flexible like OpenSSL that is really just a crypto library, or asking your enterprise CA vendor to add something to your CA. I couldn't believe it, but there you go. Um, and in general, that certification process does need to actually check that this is an endorsement key that came from the right process. We, we previously said we were recording some out-of-band verification information. It is important that your CA actually check that before issuing the certificate. Beyond that, certification is completely standard. You can use an X509 certificate. You can use whatever other formats of certificate your heart desires. We don't care as long as it says, this is a TPM endorsement key. 
here's some information about the TPM, and it's signed by someone you trust to have actually done the verification. Non-endorsement keys, the exact same things apply. All of the same problems still apply. When you are creating certificates for non-endorsement keys, it is important to indicate the type of the key. You don't want to issue certificates that just say, key X is a TPM key. Well, what, what, what can I know from that? I, I know that it's associated with that TPM, but that doesn't tell me anything about its behavior. So you want to be able to distinguish, this is an endorsement key, this is a signing key, this is a storage key. And in some cases, with signing keys, you've got some other choices that you make that you really want to also include in the certificate. I'll be talking about those in a lot more detail tomorrow morning um, because you can, in fact, shoot yourself in the foot using the wrong signing key, so you better be able to verify which signing key you're using. Um, and if you are using multiple certification mechanisms, and this might be as simple as, you know, we have the flash provisioned uh, things versus the, the live CD provision machines, this might be I'm doing hand certification versus I'm using an actual TPM cryptographic certification approach that we'll be talking about next. We do really recommend you be able to tell the difference so that if you find a flaw in your process or if you manage to find a flaw in the TPM certification process, you can tell which ones you want to revoke. But this just seems like good practice. You know, it's, it's not critical to trust, but really it seems like a good idea. Um, the keys are identical. Okay. It is purely a matter of how they're certified. Okay. And one of the things that I'll actually mention um, in the next talk is if I am certifying a key, even if I have previously certified it directly by hand, the way the TPM is structured, if I, in two years, set up a proper certification infrastructure to use the TPM certification process, I can recertify with the TPM process any key that I've previously created, and so I can establish trust via, via multiple mechanisms. So same key could be certified multiple ways, and that's fine. Um, so there's not actually any huge difference there. It's just a matter of if I'm creating a certification infrastructure, I generally want to have as much information as possible about just so I can decide whether or not to trust that certificate. So, um, we've talked about how we need to establish the, that initial trust in the TPM and how important it is to establish that initial trust in the TPM. Um, that we generally want to do this in a trusted environment for maximal security, although real, real world we expect a lot of compromises for practicality because really right now that's not a, a, an immediate threat. Um, and during provisioning, you're going to create and certify the endorsement key. You're going to take ownership, which also creates that storage root key. And optionally, we can create other TPM keys. I am not familiar enough with how those work to tell you what the granularity of those CAs are. Yeah. Um, I do know that different, there are at least a couple of branches that use different CA choices, yeah. um, such that getting one CA vendor to support the TPM certification process may not be sufficient for all government customers, right. um, but th there is variation. The other thing to note is that when you're talking about certifying TPMs, you don't necessarily have to be all or nothing. That if I have one department that wants to use TPMs and or, or one division or, or one branch, yeah. I don't necessarily have to have a CA that everyone everywhere trusts. I can provision my TPMs using my local CA mm -hmm. and if nobody else trusts them, that's not a big deal as long as the TPMs are only being used to sort of to, to mm -hmm. um, communicate inside that region. And if we have multiple branches that both set up their own separate enclaves of, of TPM usage and then later on say, you know, we should talk, 
Well, the, the humans can say, is your process as good as my process, and then you know, cross-certify or, or accept each other's CAs as authorities. So this doesn't need to be stood up as the entire U.S. government at once. 